Good morning, Faith Family. It's Thursday. Perhaps more importantly, it's the day after the passing of Tropical Storm Zeta last night. I just want to say, if you had any damage that you can assess so far, or if you know of any needs that have come up, don't hey, don't hesitate to call us. Let us know because we want to help. And it might be that we can arrange some others to come alongside and help us with that. Uh, of course, something like this, it may be picking up limbs, other types of debris in the yard. We pray, of course, there was no major damage and that you haven't been affected in a major way. Uh, some of you are probably on your way to work right now. And so uh, praying God's protection over you as you travel along the roads, not knowing exactly what you might encounter on that as well. And so we want to focus today on Luke chapter 9. We're looking specifically at verse 26, where Jesus makes this very poignant statement. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words and the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and that of the Father and the holy angels. Now, you think about this word shame or ashamed of. Have you ever gone into someone's house and just see maybe uh, animals, you know, uh, animals that have been um, have gone through the taxidermy process and uh, been mounted and you've got them all around? Uh, you would have to say that person is not ashamed of demonstrating their passion for the outdoors and for, for sport and game. Or perhaps you go in and you see pictures posted everywhere and if it's grandparents, then it's most likely their grandchildren or if it's parents, it's their children. And clearly because they have their, pe- their picture posted everywhere, you know, they're not ashamed of it. They're not hiding it. Uh, and that can go on and on and on with different scenarios, whether it's favorite authors and the books are on display. You know, you can work through all those different ideas, but, but the, the same, the same concept proves true through all of that. That when we're not ashamed of something, we're going to display it. We're, we're going to somehow draw attention to it. We're going to let people know. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about here. That, that word ashamed, it kind of carries its own way. But it's this idea of to despise something or to find something unacceptable. And so you put that back in the context of the verse. Jesus says, whoever uh, despises me and my words, whoever finds me and my words unacceptable, well, then the Son of Man is going to be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and that of his Father and the holy angels. Another statement that he makes similar to this is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, where he says this, Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. And so we see that there is a there's definitely an effect, an eternal effect, when we act out of shame, we, we or excuse me, when we fail to act because of shame, because of a, a sense of despising or finding unacceptable, when we don't promote, we don't prize, when we don't project our Lord in a way that shows others that we delight in Him, we love Him, and His grace has saved our soul, then Jesus says that's nothing short of shame. And He says the the, the, the judgment for that, the the response to that. Is going to be that that he will be ashamed of, of us when he comes in judgment in that time of judgment, and so the writer of the student edition asks a pretty cool question, and, and it kind of should hopefully get our minds to thinking how we can put this truth into practice. It says this: How do you live unashamed for Jesus? And that's a great question. How do you live unashamed for Jesus? Well, some surface level ideas, you know, just some practical, easy ideas. Number one, we're intentional about sharing the gospel. Uh, and as I've said many times before, sharing the gospel doesn't mean I move anybody across the quote-unquote finish line. It just simply means I present the gospel in its purest form in a way they can understand it and, Lord willing, respond to it in, in saving faith. Uh, but ultimately, they may reject it. That's not for me to determine. My responsibility is to be faithful to share. You know, Another way is through our actions, of course, making sure that our conduct matches that of our Lord Jesus. You know, the whole idea of Christian was, first of all, a derogatory term. It meant little Christ. It meant these people are trying to mirror uh, and emulate Jesus. They're trying to act like Jesus. So our actions, uh, that's another way that we can live unashamed. Uh, and that goes into our words. Uh, that goes into the attitudes that we harbor in our heart toward others. All of that can be a way, a practical way, that we live in an unashamed way of who Jesus is. So I hope this is encouraging for you. And again, I just want to stress, hey, you know, if there's something we can do for you today in terms of ministering to you, feel free to call us up at the office and let us know. And we would love to come alongside you in that. And whether you're headed to work or whether you're heading out in your neighbor's yard or somewhere else in the community to help out with debris pickup or some sort of a, a storm a response, remember, in everything we do, we need to do it with the attitude of living safe.